Hi, I'm Tony Stefano with Hillside Christmas Tree Farm, and today we are going to work on my Polaris Ranger. Um, I purchased this thing last year, and shortly after that I got an engine code and it felt like it lost power. And in doing my research I found that um, it was an injector connection problem. And so today I, I thought I fixed it, you know, it looked like it was like a loose, I can move the wire, and maybe the, the wire wasn't fully broke, but what on my research what I found is that the wire actually breaks inside the insulation and it causes a misfire. So I bought a new harness <clears throat> for 20 bucks on Amazon. The link is down in the description and I'll go through how to diagnose and replace this harness. So why don't you follow along. All right, so I have the seat off. We're gonna get this thing started up and I'll show you what the, the engine sounds like when it's missing and when it is firing normally. Let's get the seat out of the way. All right, so right there, it sounds pretty good running normally. I don't have an engine code, but if we move the injector wire, we can hear that tone change. And the fact that we are moving the wire, the engine light just came on, we can hear there is a difference. So our problem is an electrical connection. What I wanna do now is show you how to get and view the engine codes. All right, with the engine running, we can see that we have our engine light and we can hear that engine is missing. We're gonna use the button here to cycle through the different options until we get to check engine. Now we're gonna push and hold the button and we see the engine light flashing. That means that we are getting into the, the OBD code, the engine code menu. And we see we have an engine code 651 and in my research that shows that we have our uh, injector, injector connection, misfire, something along those lines. And yeah, so that's how I found that out. So to get out of it, we just hold the button again and we'll shut it off and we will replace that wire. All right, we're gonna get the uh, cooler out of the way. <clears throat> Storage container, whatever it's called. Then we're going to follow our injector harnesses down. We see some zip ties, so we're just going to cut those off. And we see that here is our injector wire that comes down through, down to here, down to this connector. So what I bought on Amazon for a whopping 20 bucks was this whole little harness. And I was going to replace both of them because if it happened to one injector, then it will probably happen to the other. And it's you know, pretty cheap fix, so we'll just get that whole thing replaced. All right, one thing we're gonna do is do them one at a time. Obviously, we don't wanna get them mixed up because timing of fuel matters. So I unhooked the right side. And what I've noticed a lot happens is that the lock or hold down when you unhook the injector harness comes with it. We're going to 
be in trouble if that doesn't come out. Oh, there it goes. But yeah, this this hold down for the uh, the pins of the injector connector tend to stay in there. And I think when they built these things, they glued them in place. So we'll pull that down. Now we can go to the other angle and see that. And then we can take this off. So this is what we were replacing. Pretty easy with a connector on one end, connector on the other. We don't have to cut, we don't have to solder. I did see a couple of videos where they were actually taking the connector apart and re-soldering the pins, but I personally wanna be as efficient as I can when I come out here because I don't live on the farm and I don't have a lot of time. Replacing the whole harness was a lot easier and a lot quicker than um, soldering and, and repinning things. So I chose to go that route. Here's our new one. We'll route it down. And again, we did this one at a time so that we don't cross, get them in the wrong order. Plug one end here. <laughs> well, it actually looks like the connectors are a, spe a specific way, so you can't get them mixed up. That's really helpful. So I had to grab the other cable, the other harness. Again, we'll wrap that up. Make sure it's rounded the same way. Plug it in. And what I read was that this harness, it seemed to be pretty tight. So this one a little maybe is a little bit longer. We'll give it a nice loop. That way the vibrations, we can uh, not mess that up and re-break the wire. We'll do the other one. Injector clip just clips on. Pull this guy off. That one is the one that's been my problem child, so I had him off and on multiple times. Pull him through. Down to this connector. And we see that, like I said, they were paired. So they are different colors. And if you look real close at the end of the connectors, you can see they are different to plug into. So you can't mix these up as far as on the uh, harness and on the injector end, I'm sure you could. So just be aware of that. And injector number two. under the throttle cable, get the hold down, latch them, push them in, and plug it in. I heard it snap, good connection, nice little loop. We know the seat sits on here, so we won't be rubbing on anything. And yeah, we'll get a zip tie, we'll zip tie it up like we had it before. Hopefully I have one in here. Grab a zip tie real quick. All right, well, that other zip tie was kind of around what looks like maybe a breather hose or something. So we will zip tie all that back together. Let me 
make sure it's not rubbing on anything. Looks good. Looks good. All right, let's fire it up. Oh, look at that, our battery's dying. All right, definitely running on both cylinders, that's good. And being new, we're not gonna even wiggle stuff around. So we will call that good. All right, let's get it buttoned up here. We'll put the cooler back in. Put the seat back in. All right, that's the work of it. So we um, we purchased this thing last year, like I said, and in the past and before that, we had a golf cart. And I'll tell you, this thing here is a much better tool for having on the farm than the golf cart. Obviously, a golf cart's meant for just kind of cruising around. This thing is meant to work. So it has the dump bed. It's got four-wheel drive. We can pull wagons with it. We can pull the tree, pull trees with it. It helps just all around a lot better. And a big shout out to my sister and brother-in-law for buying their new one and giving us the opportunity to purchase their old one. And yeah, so that was it. Um, again, that was code 651 for uh, Polaris Ranger misfire. And yeah, thanks for watching.